Words are about to be spoken for episode 100 of the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy, presented to you by the podcast and Ad Free Shows Network. I'm John Alba. That's Matt Hardy, the broken one, the woken one, the spoken one himself for the 100th time coming to your ears. What's going on, my man? Happy 100. We're syndicated now. We, we, hit, we hit triple digits. We're in three digits, John. Episode 100. Can you believe it? We are the pod with three digits. That's what we are yeah, now. Pod with three digits, yes. We truly, truly are. Outstanding. I, it's, been, it's been a hell of a trip, man. And it's one of those things, too, where it seems like time has flown by. It seems like we're just doing episode one. I know. Uh, a couple months ago, in reality. you know, But it has. It's been two years. It's crazy. It, it is insane. I cannot believe uh, so many podcasts don't even come anywhere close to reaching a number like this think about how many shows are started and abandoned ship within a month or two uh, right. it's really difficult to sustain a product especially a product that is so niche so i'm i'm very proud of the work that has gone into the extreme life over the last two years but especially matt because of the amazing supporters that we have who don't yes. just love our show, but love the Hardy Boys. And that's we we couldn't be here in this position without them. They're they're the best. Our uh, our die hardy fans uh, mm. truly are the best, man. And uh I just I can't I can't say enough positive things about them. And I've said this, if I've said it uh once, I've said it a thousand times. I mean, without you, without you. The people that tune in each and every week to the podcast, the people that come to the arena and cheer for myself and Jeff uh, over the course of 32 years. Without you, there would be no us. So thank you so much. And that carries over to the podcast. And, you know, this is truly a project of passion for myself and John when he pitched this to me a couple years ago. And, uh, and we're so happy to be here at episode 100 right now. I've never really even asked you. <laughs> and now I can because we're two plus years into this whole journey <laughs> like what was your reaction when i even came to you to pitch the idea because i'm sure there's been some money marks who have come to you over the years with a bunch of ideas and different projects they'd like you to be a part of but i, I genuinely have no idea what your reaction even was in the first place uh, i mean I, I think my initial reaction was like well, it would be a little extra work, you know, kind of on top of what life is in general. You know, I have a pretty mm -hmm. busy life overall between, you know, personal time and professional time, you know, work and family. But but I was like, this, this is a cool project. Like, this is something I can see being an extension uh, of, you know, my occupation after I retire from the ring and whatnot. So I, I was excited about it. I thought it was a good pitch. You really presented it well, and uh, I was really looking forward and, and, and truly interested in doing it. So yeah. I was I was very genuine. I was genuinely very sincere in the way I reacted to to your pitch. Man, I I wanted this project for so long. It was something that had been festering in my brain for literally years, and then when right time and place kind of came together. I reached out to every single person I knew in wrestling who might know you just right. to try to get you to give this jabroni five minutes of your time to listen and uh, try to pitch something that I, I knew, like you said, you're a busy man. I knew it would take up some time, but I really did believe that this would be a good road and path to being able to further extend your career, tell your stories and provide people with this part of you that I, I don't think everyone knew existed right. and I I've just been so thrilled with how quickly you took to this and the quality of the product in comparison to many others I'll stand by it man I'm, I'm very proud of it 
Thank you. I, I am too. I, I really am proud of our product. Uh, you know, you, you do amazing, you do an amazing job, uh, Thank behind you. helm, you know, uh, keeping, sometimes we had these situations like when the good brothers were on stage, uh, <laughs> you, you, you kind of have to, you, you have to corral them. Like I corral the gaggle at home, you know, so you do a really good job behind the helm, you know? Thank you. I show. appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's, it's nice to have one person in wrestling actually complimenting me. So that's kind to hear. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm so, I'm so grateful, man. I mean, the opportunities afforded to me to be able to be on stage with you on the show every single week. I, I was talking to someone recently about it. They're like, do you realize how cool this is what you get to do? And I, I try to remind myself of that because it really is so cool. And I, I made sure to tell you that too this past weekend after we got done with WrestleCade. Cause I mean, I'm just, I'm so grateful and, and thankful. And I, I got a great partner out of this, but I got an even better friend out of it. And that's not anything that I could have ever anticipated. Cause for most of my projects that I have Matt, I mean, it's, it's just a standard professional relationship that I have with my coworkers and that's totally cool. And there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, I'm very grateful. And, and I hope yeah. you know that and everyone else does too. So the the, the feeling is mutual. I, I feel the same. You know, it's it's very cool that uh, we hit it off so well and have really bonded and became friends over the course of doing this project. Absolutely. Now that we're done verbally, uh, you yes. Know. <laughs> uh, now, 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 now that we've done, now that we're done indulging in our mutual admiration society for one another. <laughs> hey, I want to say this real quick. As a celebration of episode one hundred and on the anniversary of Spotify wrapped and Apple podcast releasing their top five podcast lists. As we record this on Wednesday, yes. last year, we did this as a competition. We're going to do it again as a competition this year. If the extreme life of Matt Hardy was in your top five podcasts, listened to on Spotify wrapped or the Apple podcast countdown too, send us a screenshot at our socials at Matt Hardy pod at Matt Hardy brand at John Alba. You're going to be entered in to win from, some free swag courtesy of the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy store right there. You see the QR code if you're watching on YouTube. The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy store on boxgimmicks.com. We just dropped some holiday goodies. We've got an Extreme Life of Matt Hardy Santa hat. We've got Matt Fact, Matt Fiction wrapping paper. And yes. there is even Matt Hardy for the first time ever, I would assume. You can put Matt Hardy on your Christmas tree with an Extreme Life of Matt Hardy ornament. And uh, you will be entered to win one of our holiday items uh, should you send us in one of these top five graphics. I'm so appreciative when I see that we landed in someone's top five, aren't you? Yeah, man. Especially like I saw a couple today that people send to me and we were their number one most listened to podcast. Which, what, what an honor. Thank you so yeah. much. Absolutely. We had a great weekend at WrestleCade. We did the live show, the Becoming Broken live show. Yeah, so great. We you and Jeff wrestled Rhino and Heath, and that was an awesome match. You guys tore it down. And I, I put this out there on social, Matt, and I, and I know you resonate with this, and it's going to be something we talk about a lot on this episode, but for all the discourse that I see online, all oh, these hardy boys, they're, they're over the hill, they're done, their skills have deteriorated. Well, you come out there, you sign seven and a half hours, then perform in thousands of fans in front of thousands of fans in the main event and get an insane reaction. It's just not real life, isn't it? It's not real life. Hold up. There's someone at the door. I'll be right someone back. Someone at the door. Someone do at the have, door. Do we Let have a see. cameo? It's, we might have a cameo. Hold on. We might have a cameo on episode 100 of the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. This is news to me. Let's see. I don't even know who's at the door right now. Oh, this is very, very exciting. It's a very special cameo. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to tell you, for episode 100 of the podcast, I have my kids. I know last week we had the podcast, and we had Wolfgang, and you know, we, were, oh! we, we were talking about Wolfgang. We were talking about uh, we were talking about Bartholomew, but we had Maxwell and Gothic Baby there at WrestleCade. Now Whoa. I have my, you know what I mean? My other kids are here. Yeah, we got the it. bios. Here. My black kids, man. Yeah. I love my black <laughs> kids. Yeah, you know what I mean? I dig it. I dig it. I mean, yeah, man. So uh, I just got to tell you, we had a match tonight. And uh, this guy, Brother Zay, is just killing it. You know what I mean? He's killing it. Killing hey, it. hey, hey, I'm learning from the best. You know what I mean? I'm just learning yeah, from man. the best. He's killing it. I, I, I know, John, you haven't watched yet. And, uh, and I love the match. Also, Brother Nero, he was amazing out there tonight, too. 
and and to the malcontents, as you said, that the, the pitch that discourse that they the Hardys are over the hill, they're washed up, whatever. I mean, if you don't like us, if you you have a lot of disdain for us, we're going to give you a reason going forward to have disdain for us. And the people we're performing for in the arena, the fans that are there that are cheering, they give us one of the loudest reactions every single night. Those are the people Max. we are working hard for mm -hmm. in there because they come and they rise up and and they they they, they come out uh, to to the to they come out to the highest degree and they, they cheer us on, they chant, they, 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 they rally behind us. And those are the people that we're working for. The people that don't like us, we're going to give you a reason not to like us. Well, yeah. I'm, who don't like you. I'm so grateful. We got, we got those a private hard, party here. Some of those that hard internet fans. Yeah. When you come back, the, F, the FIs, as we refer to them here on the extreme life of Matt Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, I thought the, the malcontents. No, we did. Uh, we heard some good news that Mark Wynn now he's like a couple months away from being back, which is great. Mm. Look at him. Yeah, oh, he's looking great, man. Yeah. Has some power he out. is. He is. Quinn, power how, out. how you feeling, Quinn? It's been a while since we've seen you, man. I feel pretty good, real good, actually. Ready to be back. Yeah, yeah. we we missed him, man. He's been gone a year. It's been a long time. No, it's been a year. Had bro. a very difficult injury. A year. I haven't even yeah. aged him. You have an age, man. Yeah, you actually look younder, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you dipped in the lake, man. You know, we ain't hey, going no. the lake. I ain't coming out. <laughs> you gone? Yep. You gone forever. Instant drown. Listen, one of my favorite episodes that we did. This is episode 100, guys, of the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. You got to oh, yeah. celebrate. How y'all keep it up? Who knows those stress? Uh, one of my one of my favorite episodes we did, Matt, was when we had Matt we had a private party on to discuss the Big Money Matt character and yeah. the the genesis of the the Hardy Party essentially here. I I loved the candidness and the honesty that Private Party showed you and the respect that they showed you. I mean, guys, here we are, a hundred episodes in, telling this great story of the career of the Hardy Boys. Where where do they sit for you guys in this legendary tome of pro wrestling now? What do you mean? Quick, nothing. You can start. I was saying nothing, <laughs> nothing changed. They still at the top. Facts. Who, who do they sit now? Things don't change. What was what, what are you asking here? I I just I'm asking you to uh, give your input as to what their legacy currently sits at. I think they're insulted. You think they changed? Yeah, their yeah, I ain't never changed. Well, well your skills are as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was that? Well, your well, skills are deteriorating, Matt. Okay, yeah. He's the yeah, internet well, guy yeah, you're yeah. talking about. Well, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> That's him. He's been watching too much New Japan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, this, this is a great story, guys. So, so we we have the match tonight. We come back and. You know, we come back to real. Oh, guys, it was fucking awesome. Let's go. Let's fucking awesome. Uh -huh. You know, the whole deal, whatever. And we get out of there and said, all right, guys, we'll see you later. We're going to head out, blah, blah, blah. And we start pulling our way out. And Zay said, follow me, man. I didn't know the quickest way back to the hotel. And he did. He right out. Boom. And even when we got to the arena, we got there later. As I told you, we knew we took a later flight. And once we found out we had this match and it was on Dynamite, I text, uh, I text Jose and Jay said, "Oh shit, man, I'm still at the hotel chilling." He said, "I'll be right there." Hey, the heart is rubbing off on me, man. Yeah, and I said, "I love so much." I said, "You're gonna like, you're over the course of this last year, especially with Gwen hadn't been around as much. It's just like he's kind of got like jaded. He's like the old vet now. And he's like, oh, you know, he'll go in, he'll do his work and kill the show. And he's just, all right, I'll see you back at the hotel, brother. Learn the business, you know? Yeah, yeah learn the business, man. You know? Yeah, once you, you start up. bumming cigarettes off someone, that's how you know you really made it as a member of the Hardy Party. Uh, no, but man, it's so great to see you guys back there together and in, in Matt's corner, even proverbially here on episode 100. I mean, as far as both of your futures, would you guys like to still continue to run with the Hardys? Like, I, I'd love to know what you see your path as here. I, I see it still with them. I want to do like the trios belts, and like you know, mm -hmm. between any four of us. Yeah, the fever mm -hmm. rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like that. Yeah, that makes more sense. You know, it's it's gonna be the Hardy Party rule. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, yeah. The HP rule. And I the do party rules. I yeah, like it. I, I I think there is such a unique and special bond between us that the fans legitimately give a shit about i think it's important to like kind of keep us together on the same page i think they whenever they come back in a couple months and they do their thing let's let's make private party uh, a, a big name tag team uh let's make the big stars in aw that's what i would like to do and still that's that's very important to me going forward you know because i feel like 
the success of these guys is part of my legacy at the end of the day. Sure. But but I, I feel like still having a tight friendship and bond with the Hardys is good. And I think it's very believable. And, you know, if we get to that point where we do something else and we, we tell the story in getting there. But I think it's so real. It's so genuine. People feel it. They, they, they know it's legit. So, like, let's keep it up. To answer, pick it back off of Matt. Basically, I, you know, I'm, you know, and John, you know, I'm a big, big fan of like giving people their flowers, right? You know, I'm always huge, flowers, you huge. Know I mean? And, you know, like I said before, everybody knows this. I'm a big Hardy Mark. I'm probably one of the biggest Hardy Marks of all time. <laughs> but so, like, you know, just being watching these guys as a kid and then be able to team with them, go out there. I do Jeff Hardy dance. He don't tell me shit. And, like, <laughs> you know, I still do the swan time. He still don't tell me shit. So like so stuff like that is like really cool to me and I like mm -hmm. I, never get, I never get used to it I never get numb to that feeling because it's crazy like I used to watch these guys as a kid and then I'm teaming with them and what ba what way what better way to learn from my favorite tag team like I see yeah. it all the time yeah oh get away from the heart oh that yeah, shit. yeah 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 but listen <laughs> yo these guys are my favorite tag team why would I want to get away from them yeah, I don't, I don't I, anything I just want to I want to be like them I want to follow their footsteps you know what I mean yeah. so. So you're going to bring back the leg drop? Not told Matt to bring it back. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> Ron, I, I, Ron, I hey, man, I'm going to hit you with a Ron Simmons. After we hit Ron Simmons with the Vin Omega the first time, and it wasn't bad. We, we took good care of him. We were going to hit him again at the next pay-per-view where we were dropping the towels back to him. I said, right there, we could do that leg drop splash, and we do it. Is that cool, Ron? I said, no, nah, I don't really see that happening again. <laughs> <laughs> We won't be doing that again. That's that is for sure. Uh, hey guys, before I let you go, we are celebrating 100 episodes of Matt Hardy, uh, the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. We're talking about the future of the Hardy Boys and what's next for them. What would you like to see them still accomplish in AEW as they embark on this last great run as one of the greatest tag teams of all time? Here, the tag team titles. Yeah, they got to win the yeah. tag. Team. Uh, of course, tag team titles, and then you know the uh, trio championships. So when yeah. I, whenever I go to Hardy's house, I get to say, "Yo, I remember that title." I know you're gonna put it up. Oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like, yeah, I, I was a part of that. You know, what yeah. I mean, everywhere. But like, I'm, my, I'm my, my wife's already got it in the draft. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the one, draft. one fourth of the trio titles. Yeah, I mean that, that'd be a crazy legacy. Like you won every major tag team yeah. championship in your company. Even that's yeah. pretty cool. And I, actually, something I something I would like if we have some sort of bond. If Jeff and I go in a different direction, we're a little more aggressive as the Hardys. You know, we kind of uh, vent to some of our films of some of the more diehard AEW fans, and we go in that direction. But we're still cool with these guys, or whatever. They're respectful of us. We're still respectful of them. We take care of them like they're our baby brother, whatever. Uh, I could even see if there was something where there was like tension between us, and then if we did have the titles, I would love. These guys to win the titles from us if anybody does. I think that would be a big full circle. What a rub. Book. You know, that that would that that's that's my book. Yeah, I'm hard right now. You know, if yeah, this no, if, if, if this was Omega, if this cry. was Omega, but you know, it's not Omega. Yeah, I told I keep we telling bring him bring it back. back. Yeah. I keep telling him bring it back. You don't listen to me, I'm telling you. We need some I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. I think no, that's I mean, something I do I think. free. I do that shit free too. You know, it's a driver. Mm -hmm. Look at that, Matt. You don't even gotta pay a wee fee. Look at that. Yeah, we'll have catering. I'll I'll bring in some catering. Chick-fil-A He'll order in Bob's Bob's pizza will be delivering and catering. Oh cookout. Cookout, yeah. We cook out too. Cookout's all right, right? I just had some. I love that. I love that so much. Hey, private party, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, brother Zay. Uh, we are so proud of you guys here on the Extreme Life, and even just seeing where you are now versus where you were almost two years ago when you're on the podcast with us, it's pretty amazing to see how far you guys have come. So, congratulations on yeah, everything you. you're accomplishing. Is is there anything else you guys would like to add here on episode 100 of the Extreme Life? I like to do the cutoff, the cutaway. The <laughs> My God, I'm going to do the cutaway. You know, you know, uh, there you have it, man. They got—I'll just say—they like, got a pretty amazing legacy. Like when you really think about it, like the shit that they've done. And I already told you, man. Black people—they fuck with y'all. You know, they—they <laughs> oh, yeah, they, yeah. yeah, <laughs> they rock with y'all so hard, like it's crazy. Like the like, hey, 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 I'm not gonna say it, but if you go on my Instagram page and you go in the comments of when these dudes in do rags, 
The comments that they were saying is insane. But you know what? It's accurate, though. It's accurate. It's accurate. So, like, man, we just got so much love for you, homie boys. That, that's one of my yeah. favorite things, man. Whenever I do one of Zay's videos, one of his vlogs, whatever, I'm just ready for him to strap the do rag on me, man. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they, love they love it, man. I just want <laughs> one day I just wish that we have a legacy like y'all's because y'all, 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 oh, yeah. y'all I, I, mean, I, well, like, I, I hope you do too. And that's what I want for you guys. And I just, I just want to say too, the growth of Zay this last year and the growth of Quinn when I was working with him, I was going to say, even tonight we were trying to figure out what we're going to do for the, for the big deal at the end. Anybody who watched the match tonight, you know, there was one point where uh, Jeff did a poetry in motion to Dante. We scooped him up and uh, Zay gave him an enziguri from the uh, apron to the second rope. And then we took him out, put him on our shoulders. He did a springboard drop kick. That was Zay's call, man. Zay's call. Cool. So, cool. you know, he was, uh, he, he, we were all working together. Actually, but cool. His, uh, it was, I was I was gonna let you have it. Oh, and I, you looked at me. I, you, no, you, no, you looked I, at me. I, so I you about the sport. No, no, no. We, I, I was gonna let you have it. We we, we, <laughs> we, we did. We were doing when we were doing triple threat stuff. We did start yeah. doing the doomsday device, and you're doing the springboard drop kick. There you go. Quen's out here producing matches behind the scenes already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been exposing me. That's why I've exposed myself. <laughs> and I, I do I do I do just want to say, man, I'm very happy to have Dante. Dante back, good and healthy. Uh, he was great out there tonight. Uh, had yeah. had a really fun time with him. Dante and Darius, I, yeah. I love those guys. They're great. I don't know. You know. I don't feel the same, especially what they did to Isaiah. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I had that combo and the referee saying get out the ring. They didn't get out. Well, that, that is true. But I mean, true. like, if it comes down to private party, then Dante and Darius. I mean, yeah, they're done. They're, they're done, buddy. They're oh, done. Yeah. Yeah, you're done, done, pal. Your time is up, buddy. Yeah, I'm yeah. home. It's, pri it's, pri it's private party all day long. Oh, yeah. Take it home, buddy. Hey, all day home. long, every day long. Yo, John, you miss me? Dude, every day. Like, literally every day. I just... there, There's nothing that is more entertaining than seeing you pop up in my ex timeline, knowing that you've gone on some nefarious vacation and are dancing to land music with Daniel Garcia. I look forward oh, to that every day. You know, one day I got to make, like, a Patreon of, like, all the shit I can't put on YouTube. But, like, that's when I retire. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, don't, you, don't want, you don't want to damage your uh, credibility in the business. Yeah. You know? Probably make an OnlyFans, too. Yeah, know? I was going to say all, OnlyFans. All, all, the, uh, all the content that y'all don't see because it, it gets wild. It gets wild. Like, Danny, yeah, I mean, just, you already know. I was like, hey, that's a big OnlyFans. DG Zay. Only you got to make him pay for that stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how yeah. it really goes. Um, it. Hey guys, I, seriously, thank you for swinging by, and and we we appreciate you so much here, and and I appreciate you, and Quinn. It's so great to see you, and we hope yes. uh, nothing but the best for you guys. Yep. I can go months. Here we go. Hey, guys, who didn't just see that? If you're not watching, we just hit the names. You know yeah. what that means. If you know what that means, you're a historian. If you, you know, know you know. Stuff, if you, you don't know, you you missing out, man. You missing out. We hit it tonight. Certainly so. That's uh, some good Michael Hayes stuff. Early episode for us. You can check that out in the archives as well. If you want to see Rebby Hardy yell at me, that's a good one to go back and watch because that's... Uh, She's really good at yelling at people. She, you know, she really is. She's really, <laughs> really, she's really well, I, just, I just want to share this story while you're here, and also the viewers will appreciate it as well. So, you know, our friend, Sean Ross Sapp, right? We see him. <laughs> okay, right? And uh, and and what happens when Revy when, when Revy sees him, John? <laughs> she, the, 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 so, the, the, the truculent Rebecca Hardy, the truculent. Okay, Rebecca so Hardy. I just I want to say that I'm going to tell this story because Matt has brought it up, and if Rebecca, you hear this, I'm merely telling the story because Matt is the one who is. Yes, <laughs> Give me the heat. I got it anyway. Please. Uh, so we're <laughs> walking. We're walking, and I bring Sean Ross Sapp into the room that Rebby's in to meet her. He had never met her, and he wanted to meet her, and he wants to say hi to Gothic Baby because she was in there, and Maxwell is there, and he wants to say hi to them. So he goes to say hi to them, and uh, I go, Rebby, this is Sean Ross Sapp, and she stares at him. He goes to, like extend his hand, and she's just staring at him, and she goes. How old are you? And, and he goes, uh, says his age. She goes, interesting. Wow. <laughs> and that was the extent of the conversation. And I go, all right, we're going to go in the other room right now. We're going to go. So see you in a bit. <laughs> and 
Sean, Sean was like, you know, the thing that I hated most about all that was that you started laughing the moment she asked how old I was. <laughs> and I said, hey. it's like, I know, man. He's but like, they, holy shit, that chick's intense. But did they shake hands? <laughs> She's the queen. Did they, did, 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 they, did they achieve the shake? No. No, I I I I went and talked to him afterwards. He made sure he was all right. I said, "This is this is normal for her, man." Yeah. You should have seen how how hard it was for John to to break through. You know, oh, yeah. it took him a while to break through. It took me took me some attempts and a two hundred fifty dollar edible arrangement gift basket. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I know Zay's got some words. Where the fuck is Matt at? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm not even gonna say. It. Yeah, <laughs> I've gotten those text it. messages. I've gotten those text messages too, for the record. She had me shook that one time. <laughs> I'm like, yo, ladies and gentlemen, I give you my wife, the truculent. Oh, she, but she Rebecca called me though. She called me though. Yeah, she, I mean, I, I she's the best. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> she's the best. She's the best. You know she how is, much she is, she is the best. Yes, we love Rebby here. I genuinely, um, but yeah. This has been this has been great, guys. Really appreciate you swinging by. Of course, anytime, and, um, always. You got it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even if I was sleep, I would have got up. All right, <laughs> yes. right away, my man. Hi, y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye, 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 my boys. Be well, guys. Good seeing you. Yes, sir. Always Merry a Christmas. pleasure. You ready? Oh yeah, happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy holidays. You guys as well. It's, it's not even Thanksgiving for Quinn yet, he said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> always, always a blast. We'll take a quick pause here to talk about our friends over at Game Time. It is the holiday season. There are so many events going on, whether they are stage show, they are theater events, they are games, they are wrestling shows, whatever they may be, you want to be there. And I know it can be extremely frustrating trying to find the perfect ticket there are so many lines you have to wait in these days you worry if you refresh you're going to lose your spot not with our pals over at game time you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to the event that you want to go to and game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the events in your area with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and the best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. One of my absolute favorite things about game time is the view from all seats in the venue. They are accurate. They are there to show you exactly what you're going to be buying. You toggle on the all in pricing feature and you know that you will not be hit with any sudden fees or taxes at the last second. This is the most transparent ticket buying experience that you are going to have. And you're going to be able to buy those tickets in seconds with just two Taps. You can find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. With zone deals, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of an 18% savings. And the game time guarantee means you're always going to get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, my friends. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Hardy for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Hardy H A R D Y for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey, I do want to put over Rebecca here for a second, though. Uh, Rebecca has been more than accommodating and. As much as we joke about it, she she has been very graceful with allowing no, us to do this podcast and uh, spreading your time with this. And I, really, I'm I'm very appreciative of it. And I have such a great deal of respect for Rebby and what she does as a mother, as a content creator, and as as a wife for you as well. She she's really one of the most unique individuals you're ever going to meet in life. And I'm grateful yes. to have crossed paths with her. Yes, I am too. She is. She's super mom, and uh, I love her to death. She's great. She she does three full time jobs, and she kills it. Another knock at the door. I'll be right back. Okay. The door that just keeps knocking. The Jesus. door. The door. This is the forbidden door that we are that we are opening here. I will. I will say, Matt. Yeah. My. I. I think my favorite 
moment on this podcast that we ever had <laughs> was when we had Gangrel on and we're talking and Rebby was oh, behind yeah. you and he's talking about Luza being Luna being crazy. And, Ladies and gentlemen, say, I think I know a t- thing or two about that. And then she hits you with a good shut the fuck up. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got Brother Liz. Nero here. Got a good yeah. name, my Brother Nero. Hey. There he is. Nero. You just look right there. Oh, okay. Got a little green dot. And you're all good. It's been a while. So, yeah, we're here to t- uh, private party. Did you see them on the way out? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you did. They came in, they did a little spot too. I uh, just had a big match tonight. We were talking about that where you did that dive, man, to, to Dante tonight. The match that was killer. Yeah, that this was, was fun. It was great. It was so, so good. Shades of Willow back in the day. You know, yeah, it was. Very, 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 very much. Actually, well, had fun today, man. So I did too. Time. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a very, very I fun I want to night. talk about that with you guys a little bit here. You know, Brother Neo, first off, so great seeing you this past weekend at WrestleCade. You crushed it with your concert that you did. Uh, I was. It was amazing. It seemed like you had a blast. How was it? It was, yeah, it was, it was fun. And uh, the more I do it, I feel like I get better. And the main challenge for me is like the in-between moments, in-between songs. So I think uh, next time I want to write down notes because there's always things popping in my head about discussion stuff in between songs, but I just, I get nervous and I I forget when I'm up there, but I write down some notes on my arm just to hit those uh, really special in-between moments. Isn't that amazing? Like you've been performing for 30 plus years now you do swantons off 30 foot platforms but it's those small in between moments between songs that really get the nerves going that's just yeah. an amazing performer brain yeah I normally like silence you know that silence is awkward because it's all all <laughs> eyes are on you to like, okay what am yeah. i gonna say you know they're they're waiting but um but yeah i love it man it, I, I mean it really is because you're a one-man show up there i mean everything's all yeah. you it's not even like it's a tag match where there's other guys in the match who can like pick up the slack and the audience focuses on them. I mean, whenever you're there doing like a solo acoustic set, it's like all eyes on you. Yeah. And Jerry and I've, uh, Jerry Massengill, the guitar player, and I have had some amazing uh, mental moments, like with the way we're a lot alike uh, in a lot of ways, but uh, with the music, man, there's sometimes I'll say, well, just pick a song and, and we'll see. And and a lot of the times, man, 99 times out of 100, uh, it's the same song. So we got a good a good vibe going on with the music. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we had you on episode one of this podcast many moons ago, and now we are on episode 100. So I just felt it would be appropriate that we had you on here to talk not about the past, but actually instead about the future of the Hardy Boys, because we've been talking a lot about the past for these past 100 episodes. And now to kind of look at both of your respective futures and what lays ahead for you guys. So I want to ask you, because we haven't really had a chance to talk to you about this since you returned to AEW. How how do you feel you've been acclimating back into this weekly routine of getting back out there on the road and you and Matt starting to gel again? Uh, Good. My biggest challenge has been uh, the eye surgery I had back in March with the double vision. So that's still my biggest fear. But I mean, I can see where I need to see like the double vision still there. And and like, for example, leaning back in the bed, trying to watch TV and even looking at the camera now, it's doubled up on me a little bit. But to the left where it all started, it's pretty much gone. So I can see like where I need to in the wrestling Mm -hmm. ring. And I just need to do more matches, more matches like tonight where I'm actually excited to go out there and perform. Um, So, yeah, as as long as we keep uh, having nights like we had uh, tonight, man, I'm super excited about the future uh, of the Hardys to do doing something we've never done before. If you know what I'm saying. And and I, I think it's, it's very important just to state that I feel like there is such a great spot for us at AEW if we just utilize it in the correct way. And we just got to get there. You know what I mean? Because still, like, John, as you were talking about earlier, that WrestleCade we had this week, it was like they said it was the biggest house they'd ever had for the WrestleCade or whatever. And, like, we had such an insane line and the meet and greet and stuff. Like, you know, it was still – there's a huge fan base that wants to see us and, and we're beloved. And, sure, we're not Matt and Jeff Hardy of 1999 and 2000, but, like, there's so much we can do to help young guys continue to come up and also give our rub off to these young guys. But we just need to be utilized in, in the right way. And and, and we, we hope we can get there. We feel like we're taking steps in the correct direction now. I, I, I feel like that. I mean, I think what we did tonight was a good step to you. Yeah, and there was a super cool moment between uh, me and Action – on that little face off, we were both on our knees, you know, and I uh, and I think I said, 
old versus young. And it was, he said, yep. And I said, I like it. It was such a cool moment. <laughs> craft, you know, those things that kind of just happen when you're out there in front of the crowd. And, uh, oh, God, that was so much fun. It was great, too, because it was Top Flight's hometown, right? So they were very yeah. beloved in, in Minneapolis. But, like, whenever you went over and you did the juke kind of in their face, after you shut him down and you did all the neck breakers to him. Yeah. You know, that was cool, just how the crowd reacted to it. Even with that, I was going, okay, well, uh, what can I do other than the juke, man? Because, you know, it's not it's not uh, unique to flip people the bird. You know, a lot of people do that, but I was thinking I could have just said, did the juke, and then I could have went. <laughs> <laughs> Something like the juke, and then I don't know if I can, if that's okay to do, but then. Oh, do, like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now I know. I mean, and I'll say, I mean, just – creatively like just the way we've been utilized like the last four months it's been very frustrating we've been very patient but there has been a lot of frustration in the things we've done and kind of how we've been utilized in some ways so i feel like the natural thing to play off of it is like channel that frustration and kind of put it into what we're doing and to those people that i call malcontents you know we can call them fis whatever you know the, those people if they hate us we will give them a reason to hate us you know what i mean and the there's something we can do there to uh, evolve our characters and, and once again, reinvent into something we've never done because there's never been really like a, an aggressive uh, take by any means necessary, like uh, cheat if you have to or break the rules if you have to or be bad Hardy Boys version of the Hardys. You know, we've done different stuff as Broken Matt and Brother Nero, and there was a time where he was the Antichrist, and obviously I've been healed because I was like, you know, more of the hill because he was all historically the more popular of the two of us. You know, but I think the two of us together as in a, in a new role, I think it would be very refreshing. I think it's something that we could use to kind of like get back to where we want to be. I, I want to own in on the frustrations part you just said. You, you mentioned that you guys have felt some frustrations since you – kind of came back into the fold here as a tag team. What were your expectations upon getting going again versus what we've seen so far? I, I mean, I, I just feel like because we are considered one of the most, uh, one of the most iconic tag teams, one of the greatest tag teams of all time, you know, with all of our achievements and, you know, all the ground we've broken, all the, the trails we've blazed. I felt like we would be in some sort of circulation where we come in, we, you know, have some wins here and there. We get some momentum going. Then we go into a big issue with a younger guy. And then, like, we make this younger guy look good. You know, but we haven't really got the opportunity to do that. And and that's what I want. I mean, even, you know, there's uh, a time today after our match was over, we went back to the boss and said, hey, we want to talk to you, you know, going forward. And we're going to do that or whatever. But I, I feel like there's a way to get to that where you can still uh, keep us in the mix as someone, a team that is a threat and that is – relevant and current, but then you can still help build younger teams as well. And, and I think that's where we need to be right now. Jeff, you're yeah. a guy who's who's very <laughs> spiritually connected with yourself and very in tune with yourself. I'd love for your philosophy on the idea of waiting for an opportunity versus creating opportunity, because it seems like you guys are kind of in that position right now. How do you view that in relation to where you guys are, Jeff? Yeah, I think like uh, until – tonight really well when i first came back it was pretty exciting i didn't know what was going to be happening you know in the near future but um i think the last time i was in this uh you know extreme dimension of y'all's podcast i said that in wwe i, I felt like i was a ghost just walking around backstage and honestly man i've kind of i kind of still feel like that at AEW, uh just because not being involved in something you know cool and and i feel like there's something so special that we we have within us to really bring out and that brings me to uh ego things with ego like for example i'm at a place now in my life that uh wearing this jeff hardy i feel like a goofy goober for wearing my own <laughs> shirt i'm like wow my, why does it feel so goofy to wear your own shirt I, you know because i've never really my thing's always been there's not much difference between the uh, in ring performer Jeff Hardy and the and the reality uh, in this human world uh, performer Jeff Hardy, but um, ego. Even at the show day the night the concert, I talked about ego and uh, the lady. This another wrestler said you've you've never had an ego, but I think that's what I, I need to I need to bring my ego back. Uh, you know, ten times more intense than it was when when I was the Antichrist of professional. I was wrestling. chanting Antichrist in a lot yeah, of the Yeah, for night. sure. Yeah. yeah. It just feels like it's inevitable. It just feels like it. It feels so right. 
Um, so yeah, just, and, and, you know, you, you do gotta create the moments uh, yourself. And, um, and when you feel something, you're so passionate about something you, you're feeling, um, yeah. yeah, little by little, uh, I think we're eventually going to get there. Well, it's interesting you say that because you say the whole ghost thing and feeling like that. Yeah, AEW is so loaded with talent, right? There are so many talented individuals there that you miss a little bit of time. It's so easy to get lost in that shuffle just because there's always someone there who's ready to step up and step into that position. So, Matt, how do you grasp that then and try to leverage that into an opportunity for yourself? I mean, it's you, you just have to take whatever you have and you have to take the opportunity and you have to make the most out of each and every one. And and you do that over and over and over. And it's about being consistent. And, and I even feel like, you know, it was tricky for us and it put AW in a position when we first came in, we we're being utilized pretty good. And, you know, stuff happened. And then like, you know, Jeff came back, but we were hoping we, you know, Jeff has proved himself. And Jeff, I've never seen him in such an amazing and great place in his life. Like he's unreal. He's, he's better, way better than me now, just in general. He's so disciplined on everything he does. And uh, I, I felt like we would eventually get back in there, you know, especially once they said, okay, well, he's cool. You know, maybe like, you know, let him, you know, dip his toes in the water. Let's see how he's doing. Let's see how he's getting in. You know, he's great. You know, and, and it, it never happened all the way yet, you know, up to our expectations, what we would like to do. So now it's one of those things where we're really putting stuff out in the universe and, and we're trying to create things ourselves and make them happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Jeff, you, you first off, a sincere congratulations, because and I said this to you at WrestleK, but you're you're just crushing it in life right now, man. And it's it's very evident. And I've said to Matt on multiple occasions watching you guys, Matt, and you can attest to this. I've, I've texted you. I've said, man, Jeff looks so good tonight, like mm -hmm. picking your speed back up and getting everything going again. I mean, where do you guys feel you are in terms of physical ability at this stage in the game? and what you have to present in relation to the rest of this very talented AEW tag division and some of the stars of that. I mean, once again, the first thing I would say is, no, we're not going to be the Hardys of the 2000s, you know, but we are still very solid in-ring performers. And there's no doubt about that. Even especially me is going to be a little more basic than he is, but still we are solid. We have a, a huge fan base that supports us wherever we go. And we can go out there and we know how to do things the right way to help elevate other people too. But once again, we still have to stay in a position of importance to a degree. And that that's what's important. That's what we're looking to get into that groove of like maintaining a position of importance so that whenever we do want to elevate someone, it really, really means something. Jeff, do you feel like you've been a little more conscious of your body now that you've come back and how you approach each match and what you're willing to do in each match? For sure. And just <clears throat> obsessing kind of and, and fishing for, you know, stuff that hasn't been done because that's so hard. Yeah, so yeah. much has been done, especially if you think about new submissions. I mean, I mean, what other formations can the human body go into to be something new right. and unique? But, but uh, for example, like this one little thing, uh, Mr. Perfect Neckbreakers, I was like, I, don't know, I was watching a match and I was like, nobody has done them from the side before. So that's a new little thing. I'm just trying to like two from the side. It's awkward. And then the regular one into another uh, big move, but, uh, and even the, uh, catapult, um, yeah. Uh, slingshot, slingshot into, into the, the leg drop on the, the, the tank I mean, that's, we did that. Just, we did that tonight on TV. Yeah. Fishing, finding little things like, like that, I think it's our go to. And, and then, and, and a big thing for me, uh, you know, without the, the face paint, I think it'll be so much more, uh, intense when I, when the people can actually see the frustration, you know, coming out of my soul, uh, through because I've always kind of been a facial expression guy when, when you know living in the moment and, and creating these moments more than having these five star you know 30 minute matches over the years but uh yeah when I when I give them a taste of the real frustration from you know um I guess not being used properly or almost uh like the respect is not there but um yeah me without the face paint I, I'm super I think or maybe it's a thing where I just don't paint as much and it just slowly goes away. And then I finally give yeah. it to him. But just the little things with just whatever I yell, even if it's just a simple, we are legendary and let them, <laughs> I mean, that frustration and, and anger was showing. I think the, the wrestling universe, uh, AEW will, will go, Oh, Whoa, this is, this is pretty exciting. We've never really seen this before. So, so Matt, is it a matter of being 
because I, I want to preface by saying you have been on the record so many times on this podcast and on social media about how much you love AW and your experiences yeah. there. So is it frustrations with creative? Is it just not being able to latch on to the right idea? W what are we referring to here when we talk about wanting to better your position? Uh it, it, frustration with direction, I would say, more than anything else. You know, there there was a couple of times uh, we we just want to have a direction and a story and and be able to go down that path. We feel like there's been a couple of things that we've kind of talked about doing, you know, over the last few months, and like stuff has changed, you know. So that that that's probably the frustration. I guess that would be a frustration with creative. Obviously, things change, people get hurt, and it, it is what it is. Uh, but I think that'd be the main frustration. We're just we think. I think there's enough equity uh, in us to invest uh, a very solid direction and stick with it and like have a game plan and stick with it. And that's that's what I would like to see happen. And, and that is what we're going to be pushing for. And that's what we're working on manifesting. Do you think that's capable of occurring? I mean, it, it, it should be. Uh, I mean, why not? You know, I mean, m most of the things that I, that have happened in life, like, you know, start when you like set your mind to something and you just try and work hard and, and, and you continue to uh, drill things in people's heads over and over until you manifest it and make it happen. I mean, that that's how things yeah. work a lot of times in pro wrestling. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. so much of life is about the why, right? Like, why do we do the things that we do? The, the genesis of a wrestling match is understanding the why in the storytelling. Why does this last major run for you guys mean so much to you? And what do you feel, Jeff, that you guys can still accomplish with this? Um, I definitely think uh, naturally the, the, the same old go-to is to be the world tag team champions one more time, the AEW world tag team champions uh, one more time. Um, but, but uh, what I'm most excited about is this something that's never been done as far as a Hill Hardy run has never been attempted or done. You know, I've, I've done one Hill thing, and I hope that's okay to just mention. But sure, yeah. I mean, I'll, that feels like uh, the the right thing to do now. Yeah. And um, and even with the ego talk and all that stuff, um, I'm a big Alan Watts, such a fan of Alan Watts. I listen to a lot of his speeches, and and there was one. One time I, I felt I had a moment of enlightenment uh, to where he, he said, and I know I've heard it before, but I ne I've never really thought about it. And it was like tomorrow doesn't exist. And just that little bitty thing right there, when I, it kind of like hit me like a wave of reality. Well, that's right. We there There's never going to be a tomorrow. We just have to have it for our plans, you know, and all that stuff. But just a little thing like that, really, like uh, I was like, oh, my God, that is so cool. There, yeah, it'll never it never comes. It's very deep. And with the music and all that stuff, I just uh, I know there's especially thinking about the broken universe stuff and, and what Brother Nero kind of became just through all match genius of that character uh, and mixing that with pretty much my own version of um, uh, of an enlightened type of uh, Jeff Hardy. I, I feel like, I mean, I know that's going to happen. Oh yeah. And, and I spaced out there for a minute, but manifestation, I've been really, I've took it to the length of uh, like, I, I journaled for the longest time, especially when I went to rehab uh, two times, I was journaling through all that. I almost quit uh, before the second time I went, but long story short, I finally got to a point to where I stopped the regular journaling, journaling, but um, I started doing dream journaling. Uh, but in that dream journaling, when I have a good dream, or one before I forget it, I write it down just just to have a dream journal. And uh, but now my manifestation stuff is uh, been right. I've been writing down like what I would like to achieve. You know, actually yeah, yeah. writing it, the old lost art of, of pen to paper. Yeah. Uh, but actually writing right. that stuff down and just how because I it's real easy for me to like tell myself really like bad negative stuff, but just yeah. write down about how, how much I love myself and love my family and how grateful I am to still be here in the wrestling uh, world and still doing what we love. And I think just the love we have from even from childhood of like, uh, it was like, I don't know about you, but like, I just, I always knew, I knew it was going to happen. I give our mom a lot of credit too, as far as the spiritual world and, and her, you know, and us kind of having a parent on both sides is the way I, way I look at it. But um mm -hmm. But I just I knew we were going to make it, especially when we started doing those jobs in WWE. I, I knew we were going to do it. I wasn't sure how, but I just knew I could feel it in my heart and my soul. 
and that's the, that, yeah. that's the same way I f- especially with the the uh, latest um, stuff going on because uh, the wrestling world can be so just oh it gets on my nerves so much and and the madness and chaos that's went on the last few months or however long it's been going on and then just what happened uh, Monday night you know just watching that uh, and it, I really got excited about you know doing something that we've never done yeah and, uh, and that that was exciting and I and I feel exactly the way I felt when I knew we were going to make it to the uh, to the WWE. Uh, eventually, and and I know we're going to do something really, really special before before it's all said and done. I think so too. And and and, and I just want to say too, once again, I'm very envious of you in many ways. I just know like it's so great, like social media stuff. Like you just don't care; it doesn't bother you. You're you're totally uh, you take all focus off of it. You're zoned out, and I love that fact about you that you really do more than anybody i know of you're truly like present in the moment and like live in the moment and a lot of us like being outside and stuff like that which is is so great and it's just hard like if you're in wrestling and you try and keep up with the news and whatnot just you see a lot of that stuff and i know john sees it too because so much of it is very toxic you know what i mean and i'm pretty good at like just you know i i it, not, nothing bothers me because once again it just doesn't reflect reality at the end of the day you know there's sometimes people that are just going to be malcontents you cannot make them happy regardless of, of whatever you say they're going to have a reason oh, yeah. to be upset and a lot of people are like that in the world now you know they want a, a reason to, to moan or complain or whatever you know it's like pity parties where i, I would much rather you know just kind of uh, zone all that out too, you know, and just like focus on me. And I feel like I'm doing a much better job of that recently as well too. And like, you're, you're kind of like the, uh, the, the, the shining beacon of hope when it comes to doing that, because you just don't care. It's so great. You just don't care. It doesn't exist to you. Yeah, That's for sure. Amazing. And the music I've been making with my, my guy in Florida, um, this next thing that's about to come out it's it's inspired by alan watch you know it's it's mm-hmm. like it's between six and seven minutes but it is it is wild man it is crazy but it's all about like that the eternal now is kind of all we have and um and it is wild it is. But, admit, but i'm just going to put it out there i know people will say whatever they want to say and, and that's fine if i read and even cared about any comments i mean i would be so down it'd be insane but yeah um, you just yeah. can't let that well that shit that's the beauty of art right where you find something that you connect with and if one person finds one thing they connect with in the art, then you've done your job as an artist because you have successfully emoted the message that you're trying to put out there. And I feel like that translates well with wrestling, too, where you guys are the artists. You are painting this picture and you've been lucky that millions and millions of fans have resonated with that. I mean, just look at this WrestleCade weekend, seven and a half hour line. Clearly, there's something that someone was able to connect with. So with that said, what is the message that you guys would like to send to your coworkers there in AEW in this last run here of the Hardy Boys that you would like to try to set the standard and lead the way with as as you try to embark on this last chapter, Matt? I I mean, I I would just like to say I I greatly appreciate everyone at AEW because they really do like legitimately bust their ass. Like it is such a hardworking locker room. Uh, and they have set the standards so high for matches that it really gets hard, harder and harder and tougher and tougher to top those things. I mean, it, it almost takes me back to the old days when we had the first tag team ladder match and then the table match and the triple triangle ladder match. And then like it ended up being the TLC matches. And it really was like a burden on us. It really weighed on us to like try and top it each and every time. And I think these guys are having such great matches week in and week out. I, I think it's tough to like try and top all this stuff over and over. And I, I, I would like to see a little more uh, story and entertainment-based stuff into characters and whatnot in AEW, just like, you know, to continue even draw more casual fans in, you know, the, it, not just hardcore wrestling fans. I feel like they're there, and the wrestling is always going to be there. I mean, that's what Tony loves. Uh, he's a huge fan of, like, great, great wrestling matches, and I don't think that's going to go away at all, but I just – I'm a huge fan of the Christian Cage, Adam Copeland storyline. It has been tremendous. And I know we talked about that earlier on, John, about their thing last week. I, I love what they're doing. I want us to kind of like get into that territory where we have a very interesting journey. Like what are these two living legends going through right now that's making them act this way? Why are, why are they being like this? Whatever. What what frustrations drove them to to act like this? And I, I think there's something that is very intriguing that we could really capitalize on. So, Jeff, do you agree 
with that sentiment? Like, do you enjoy that style of wrestling where it's more story based and character driven because you are the charismatic enigma. You're the guy who jumps off the ladders and does all these crazy athletic things. So I'm curious to get inside your psyche there and how you'd like to see yourselves presented from that stance. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's where my, um, I think that's where my, my best, uh, performing will come from it is just in the acting you know like leading up to the matches or not just in the ring like during the matches but like showing people another side of of you know me you know and and really um kind of loving my ego and myself more than i love you know jumping off ladders for the for the people kind of that's the kind of thing i'm 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 thinking about and um and i think that can really lead to something like extremely uh special especially when it comes to um just the little things you do, you know, uh, in between the matches and backstage or whatever, uh, the vignette stuff I've always loved. And I mean, we could do some incredible things uh, like that. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I think that's where my, I think our, our future kind of lies within that, that, uh, what do you call it? The Shakespeare, the Shakespeare. <laughs> of well, and that's, wrestling. that's what gave you guys your second lease on life in wrestling with the broken universe. It was all the character driven stuff that really, allowed for you to break out and, and have that and look at christian right now it's a perfect example matt you know people are so yeah. engaged in christian he wrestles once every month and a half but it's because of the character that they're right. really becoming ingrained in him so i i hear those sentiments entirely and and that that's really that's really what we 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 have this insatiable desire to like find that spot where we fit into the roster and 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 we choose a direction and we follow that line because AEW is such a great place to be. Tony's a great boss because he knows we have kids, we have families. If we're out there for a pay-per-view week and we're not needed, he's like, you know, get out of here, go home. And he's he he cares about that shit. It, it makes a difference to him. You know, you're not just a cog in the machine. He cares. He wants you to go home. He wants you to be with his family and, and whatnot. You know, so he's he's great on that front and he does take good care of us. We just want to find a solid direction and, and start moving in it and stick yeah. to it. For a lot of people like me, it is very difficult to maintain your workout regimen when the seasons start to change. Your routine is going to change when the weather starts to shift. You're not going to have access to the outdoors or maybe your personal life changes and you lose access to your gym or equipment that you had in the past. We know that working out is full of positives, but sometimes we have to adjust on the fly. You want to sleep better. You want to look better. You want to feel better. But as you get stronger, sticking to the same old routine can lead to a plateau in results. So let me help you keep your momentum going on your progress with FitBod. Now, FitBod is an app that creates personalized workouts based on your goals, abilities, and your gym setup while helping you track and visualize your progress along the way. It is extremely accessible. It is so easy to navigate. And I know that when I'm on the road a lot, just like Matt Hardy, because I really do, I've, I've tried, I'll, I'll tell you guys this, this is truth. I am down 15 pounds over the course of the last month and a half. And that's because I've changed my lifestyle. And FitBod has been a big part of that. Because when I'm on the road, I've been on the road three times in the last month and a half. I'm trying to get access to different workout equipment. It's going to be a completely different setup at every hotel that I'm at. And with FitBot, I can customize my experience to what is available and then be able to build positive fitness habits off of that and stay consistent. FitBot's powerful technology understands your strength training ability. It studies your past workouts and it adapts to your available gym equipment. The app intelligently varies your intensity and volume and tracks muscle fatigue and recovery to design a well-balanced workout plan. The app keeps your gym sessions fresh and fun by mixing up your workouts with new exercises, rep schemes, supersets, and circuits. And you can keep track of your achievements and personal bests with FitBod's all-new progress tracking charts while learning new movements the right way with more than 1,000 exercise demonstration videos. It's never been easier to get results you've always wanted. Check out FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription at fitbod.me slash hardy. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash hardy uh jeff you got christian cage there you got adam copeland there we haven't had a chance to ask you about that but can't talk about the future without talking about edge and christian because they're there for the taking uh, has that triggered any thoughts in your mind about the possibilities of what could be 
Oh, for, for sure. It's hard not to, not to think about that. It's also too, I find myself going, okay. Uh, I was thinking about this. Have they ever wrestled each other over the years? Yeah. yeah. They've wrestled they, a few times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause I couldn't even remember if that's ever uh, happened, but, um, but yeah, naturally, but, but I think a big part of me too. Oh, do we really even want to even, even go there, you know, going there and try to have more matches after all the magic we created, you know, yeah. back in the day. And I, I don't even think that, I don't even think the, the big money or the big payday in all four of us is necessarily like a singles match. I mean, I, I, I like a tag team match, a one-on-one, a, a -on -one, you know, uh, Adam and Christian versus Matt and Jeff. I mean, I, I think it is the interaction of our characters more than anything else. You know, I, I think that is where the that, that's where the, the money is. I think that's where the payoff is in this. Could we do that match? Yeah, sure. And I know I've said that before. I would like to do it as our last match or whatever. But I just think the interactions of the characters between Christian Cage, Adam Copeland, Matt Hardy, and Jeff Hardy is is, is something that is very special and it's gonna give a lot of people throwbacks to the past and all of the magic we've made in, in, in the past. Yeah, and there was so, one there was one time Adam back in uh, back when I was still in the E, you know, I talked to Adam one mm -hmm. one day and I, he said, I think we got to do it one more time. Like have another big match. And I was like, oh, heck yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> we, we had some great uh, matches back when I was bigger than Obama, you know, in <laughs> 08 and, and, uh, uh, some really, really good stuff. Uh, so, yeah, but and being that that never happened, I, I would definitely love to because it's just amazing to see how, how great they both look and how yeah. great they're doing. Is, isn't it amazing that that's just how pro wrestling has charted itself in the course of history where now somehow some way we are afforded a potential opportunity to have a match like that i mean between adam coming out of retirement christian cage coming out of retirement you overcoming your demons and being put into this position matt hardy who was once facing death in the face has proved he is stronger than death like the fact that we have gotten past those hurdles and put ourselves on a crash course for where there is a potential chance for something like that. I mean, how proud of yourselves are you guys? Because it's important to relish in your accomplishments. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I am, I'm uh, extremely proud of Jeff, you know, especially just cause you know, I've just, I've seen him throughout the years, but I mean, just the, the, the work he's done on himself and just the way he's living is just, it's very inspiring to me. And, you know, I'm very happy that I'm, you know, in a, in a good place. And then when you see Adam and Jay or Adam and Christian, just considering both of those guys, so they would never wrestle again, they would never get to go out on their terms. And the fact that they're back and they're getting ready to go out and, and finish up their career on their terms is just, it's just, it's wonderful to see, man. It's just, it's so nice. And it's such poetic justice for all four of us, I feel. Okay. You share those sentiments, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah the exact sentiments for sure, man. And the, the whole thing, I can't get, I'm so obsessed with Manifestation now. And after I, the concert you guys were at um, the other night, and I kind of manifested that for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, to make that happen. And before I went in that room, uh, the people that were waiting in line, I said, thank you all for helping this uh, manifestation come true. And I'm sure, oh, God, what's he talking about? But then, but now, like, I actually have a song that's, that's going to, I got like four different music projects going on, but like one, this one, uh, six set of songs, there's a song called Manifestations. And so my next one, after I did that concert the other night, I just want to make this video come to life. I'm kind of seeing that over and over again in my head and and to get this music out uh, first of the year um super excited about that because the evolution of my my singing is definitely came farther from where it was and um i just got to quit watching shows like like the voice or american idol because sometimes i watch the and i just see all this, this right. crazy insane talent yeah. like, what am i trying to do but then jerry my guitar plays hey, no i don't worry it's mainly it's for you know what makes you feel good uh and, and even with like i mentioned the other night tupac and my daughter ordered a, a poetry book that he had wrote this poem about vincent van gogh and then to know johnny cash wrote poems and stuff and it's just that's kind of the same thing uh over time is kind of where it all started for me too and, and it makes me makes me feel good so that's the main thing you know yeah. you, you yeah. don't worry about the the, the naysayers and the people that it that don't like it so uh yeah so yeah i'm super excited and, and you know man I, I think you're so dedicated i think you're so loyal to, to to your music passion and and you've invested so much time in it the way you've improved your voice 
over the years and, and just the quality of your singing and just you put so much time into it. You put so much investment into it. I could totally see you ending up becoming like a Jericho type deal where you end up doing even bigger shows and you're out and you eat maybe or with more established bands or whatever, because I know you're so driven to do it. Like yeah. I know it's right there on the same level passion wise, as far as pro wrestling goes for sure. If not more. <laughs> yeah. And it's even like the other night doing that right after a wrestling match, it was so cool because like all the creativity, uh, of my world's kind of, you know, all came into play in, in one day. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely a huge thing. That's, uh, God, it's so cool to look back at my life and go, Oh my God, you know, you've, you've been through so much and you've, you've created, you know, such a hell for yourself. You've allowed your heaven to collapse and created such a hell for yourself, but just to be able to look back on it and, you know, uh, and, and have what I have now, especially with my family, uh, still being there to love me. Yeah. Um, it's just so uh, every day I'm just my, my gratitude is off the charts. And I think uh, God, the Lord, great spirit. I, I thank them all every day. Yeah. Well, we're so grateful for you, man. Matt, you have something you want to say there? Yeah. I just want to say like if people are out here and first time ever they're hearing about your music and where you're doing things, is there a place they should go? to like hear your stuff or check it out? Is there any place you would want to send them to? Well, yeah, the main place is the YouTube deal. Ultra Nero uh, is the YouTube channel that all the videos that I'm making with my, my buddy down in Florida. And that's a, a new project too. Yeah. Right? He's yeah. a genius. He's a wizard with music and video production and all that stuff. Um, but Ultra Nero is the YouTube channel. Yeah, that, so to, to keep up with Jeff's stuff on YouTube at YouTube, go to Ultra Nero. That is his channel. Well, and, it, and it's funny because Jeff, this is the hundredth episode of our podcast. And I remember that one of the very first things that I wanted to secure with this podcast was getting obsolete as yeah. the theme song. And I, I, I mentioned to Matt, I was like, you think Jeff would be cool if we use this as the song for it? And now everyone is like, you've got the best freaking theme song for any podcast out there. And I mean, it is, it is a banger. And uh, we are very grateful that you contributed yeah. that. We were jamming out when you performed it live, you know? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah we, were jamming. <laughs> we were, we were jamming hard, but <laughs> l listen, Jeff, your story is so ingrained in this podcast as well. We, talk about you every single week and even though we don't have the pleasure of you having us having on having you on with us every week uh your story is so important to us and we're we're grateful for you i'm eternally grateful for your contributions your kindness towards me and your, your brotherhood towards matt and we just wish you nothing but the best and Whatever comes of this last run, I'm I'm excited to see. And with your music, man, the, your fans love you so much. You're loved by so many people. And we're very thankful that you joined us here on episode 100. So thank you. Yeah, thank congratulations, you. man. Thank like you. 100 episodes. It's, crazy, it's hard to believe. And, and just to, for you guys to, to come together and do something as rare as a podcast, man, having the balls to jump in the the competition yeah. of it all. Cause the only ones I ever, I'll see some of Joe Rogan's from time to time and uh, Theo Vaughn. I've been watching some of his uh, as of late, but uh, yeah, man, congrats, man. This Thanks, is uh, man. a lot of people that, that love it, man. I'm just not a big podcaster. So that's fine. That's <laughs> why the special appearances really mean something. So that's yeah. why we, 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 we appreciate the cameos, man. Matt, is there anything you want to say, Jeff, before we let him bounce and, get more of those dream journaling down now i'm just uh I'm, I'm very happy he's here with me for like this yeah. uh this this final run here at aw and <clears throat> i know he's very driven he's very passionate and we want to make the most out of it we want to make it as good as it can possibly be and I, I i do feel like just like he said big theme of this i feel like the motif of this talk has been manifestation right i, I feel like yeah. we're going to manifest something really good going forward i feel like uh Kind of the all the planets are in line. Yeah, and my memory back with uh with remembering lyrics, you know, I, I challenge it every day. I just want to try to like uh like uh get this out before I before I go. But um on the other side of living, now I'm living it up. I've refrained from going dark again and fucking it up. On the other side of loving, I am more than enough. There's a reason I'm alive and it's the children I've created through love with a wife. That's been a mother from the heavens above. I am her. She is me. We are God in love on the other side of loving. I'll remain as enough. She's the reason I'm alive. 
she never gave up. All right, cool. I got All through right. that. Hell right. yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. It's it's so cool with music. I know we did it with just the guitar the other night, but but yeah, that's very cool. Just check my memory bank there and see if I remember that thing. Very cool. He is he is brother Nero, Jeff Hardy. Thanks so much for hopping on the extreme life, brother. Yeah, Thank cool. You. Congrats, y'all. Much Thanks, love. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. All right, man. Well, let's get on that flight in the morning and go home. That's right, man. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Let's get back to the damn forest. Yeah, I'm gonna miss. <laughs> I'll shoot you a text and we'll figure out what time we're leaving in the morning. Bright and early. All right. Thanks, man. Hey, that was that was fantastic. Really, really appreciate you bringing Jeff in to yep. share that with us there. Uh just he, always he love that. he enjoyed I that a lot. I think he did. I think he did. I, I always just love getting a peek into how his brain works. He is one of the most fascinating individuals you're ever going to meet. And his yes. thought process is so interesting. It, it truly is. I mean, it's just, um, as I was saying earlier, I'm very, very honest when I say this, like I'm very envious, just how he just doesn't care about stuff and just nothing bothers him. He just doesn't even care to see it or opinion or whatever. And he's just unaware it's 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 got to be nice <laughs> it's got to be nice not to have any of that stress you know yeah i don't disagree i don't disagree with you on that um man i'm i'm just thinking about all this and this this whole idea of you plotting out your future and everything like i know it's wanting to make an impact in this last run and Put right. yourself in a position where you're able to contribute in a meaningful way and tell great stories. But mm -hmm. I know how grateful you are for every opportunity that you've been given, whether it's in WWE, AEW, TNA, Ring of Honor and beyond. Right. Uh, so, I mean, what is your current outlook on everything towards your path and what is to come and your psyche as far as that goes? Uh, my current outlook on everything as always, is optimism. <laughs> uh, whether it is at home, uh, whether it is at work, whether it is just generally in life. I mean, my my general outlook is optimism, man. Life is too short, in my opinion, my opinion, to not be optimistic and not believe there is something better out there for you, that things will get better. I believe we always have to do that. And, and as he said earlier, a lot of that ends up being you manifest you know, a, a better future or a better opportunity, you know, and a lot of that comes from being optimistic. And I think uh, I saw an, an exp I saw this card one time where we went and stayed in this vacation home outside of Wilmington. Very cool. And uh, it was myself and my wife before kids. And we had uh, her niece with her and her niece's uh, husband. And we were there and there was this card and it said, in optimism, there is magic. And it had some drawings and graphics in it, which just showed people just like believing in something and like manifesting it is something that has, you know, has substance to it. And, and I've always, I've always believed that too. I've said that if anyone on here has ever got a cameo from you, I know there's times in cameos where people have said they they're down, they need a pep talk or whatever. I say, just make sure to stay positive, make sure to stay optimistic because I truly believe in optimism. There is magic. And uh, you know, my outlook's always going to be optimism, man. So that's just what I want to paint because, you know, hearing some of the stuff you guys were saying, you know, there's going to be some people that will hear it and be like, oh, it's sour graps. I think it's more, as far as I read it, you guys just wanting to leave something impactful behind for people to remember and provide a positive experience for the fans and for your coworkers and, and your legacy at the end of the day. Do I have that correct? Yeah, I mean, there, there's no negativity. Once again, life is too short to harbor negativity or resentment or anything like that. I mean, once again, I feel like <clears throat> it's very, very realistic for anyone to say like, hey, this is my opportunity and I'm very grateful for it, but I would like to get it to this. And that's just like a goal. I mean, that's what life is all about, setting goals and and, and trying to be better, trying to obtain a better life for yourself, whatever it may be, and, and whatever the avenue is. And, and that is what we would like for ourselves here. And that that would be our goal. You know, we hope that he would come back, especially because Jeff's in like this amazing spot. And we would just find a way that our utilization was uh, a little more pinpoint where we have this direction, we're going in it and we can tell a story and, and, and do what we do. 
you know, we could, uh, you know, we can make our own music, you know, or whatever. But like, that's where we want to get to. And like, uh, we're putting it out there to try and manifest it. I mean, uh, uh, that really is the motif of this episode. My favorite line that I live by. You've seen the videos of me singing it at Springsteen concerts. The last line of Born to Run. Someday, I don't know when we're going to get to that place we really want to go. Yeah. And that's that's just holding on to belief, right? And believing in yeah. in in purpose and, and having something to tangibly buy into. And I think that's where you guys are right now. And look, regardless of what happens, your impact has been made. Everyone knows what the Hardy Boys accomplished and contributed towards pro wrestling. You see it at the conventions. You see it at the indie events, you see it at the AW tapings, and everywhere in between. There is no doubting your contributions, what you have accomplished so far, and now it's just putting that stamp on things and really being able to go out proud whenever that day may come. And, you know, an episode like this doesn't mean that that day is coming tomorrow, but whenever it does come, whenever it does come, you you want to be able to take a lot of pride in that last, Mm -hmm. final emphatic stamp on your career. So I, I feel your sentiments, my man. And I love your positivity. I love talking about manifestation. I, I really do believe the best episodes of this podcast are the ones that have very little to do with wrestling at all. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And that's amazing. And I'm so glad that you've decided to open up about that stuff. On this, this, is a, this is very much a proactive podcast today. Yeah. I would agree with that entirely. You you have brought a lot of positivity and optimism to people. I've just even seen some of the messages we got today when I was talking about it being 100 episodes. Just uh, someone, it might have even been Coach Rosie, I forget who it was, but they said this is just a show about life, and that's what I love, man. And I, I would have never expected that, jumping into this journey with you, that that would be where we could really make an impact. So Yeah, I, I, I love that too. I love that so much. I thought we'd be talking about TLC for five different episodes and, and everyone being like, yeah, remember that time that you went through that table in a match you should have won? But I take no greater satisfaction than talking about that real shit here yeah. on the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. Now, Matt, normally we do this in the beginning of the episodes, but we had so many cameos and everything was mm. flowing freely. I'd like to close episode 100 by asking you, on the 100th episode of The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy, please hit us with that Matt fact. All right. I got to hit you with more than one then. Oh, okay, so we're just going to rapid fire them. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Matt fact. Matt signed for over seven hours at WrestleCade. Matt fact. Matt has big heat with paper straws. Matt fact. Matt has never had a piercing. Okay, I'm going to give you a fourth one. Give me give me one to send us home happy here to celebrate 100 episodes of the extreme life of Matt Hardy. Matt fact, Matt's podcast has done 100 episodes. There it is. My friend, this has been one hell of a journey, and I'm so glad that it's nowhere near ending. We are trudging along and having so much fun on this podcast. Is there anything else you'd like to say to all the Extreme Life fans who have supported us along these 100 episodes so far? I mean, thank you so much for joining us for this journey, and we just hope you continue to join us for this journey. I, I really think, too, I think this podcast has a ton of potential. I think there's a lot of things we can do for it going forward. And I think it's going to continue to grow. And it feels like a lot of, in a lot of ways, it feels like it runs parallels to my career. It's a very, it started out as a very grassroots movement. And, you know, we just keep working, we keep chipping away. And then eventually it it becomes something great. And I think this podcast is destined to do that as well. Well, I do think it is great already. And I'm so appreciative of you and, and letting me help tell your story every single week here on The Extreme Life. I'm so grateful for everyone who just takes even a couple of minutes out of their day to check out this podcast, check out a highlight from the podcast that they see on the Sheets of Dirt 
or whatever it may be. Uh, yes. We're just so thankful for that. And honestly, we'd love for you to be a part of this journey with us. Head on over to advertisewithhardy.com. Get your product, get your business out in front of thousands of listeners every single week here on the extreme life of Matt Hardy. There's so much great stuff to come from us. And we would love to have you along the way, especially as we trudge towards the new year, 2024, which is just crazy, man. Just absolutely crazy that we have almost reached the new year. And uh, some great things are ahead, my friend. Anything else you want to say here as we wrap up? Uh, my youngest boy is going to turn four years old this weekend. It's uh, it's Bartholomew's birthday, man. It's crazy. Four. Uh, and and the more I think about it, I, I was talking with uh, with Adam today for a while. And we got into the old Jay Briscoe talk and a little bit of, of uh, Bray talk just about how, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed for anyone. You, you never know. And uh, he never met Jay Briscoe, which is crazy. But, like, it just makes me think more and more. I get so happy to see my kids grow and change and evolve. It's just even I feel blessed to be here to see my youngest boy turn four years old. As crazy as that sounds, it just, I am so grateful and appreciative of every single day I'm given, you know, because you never know. I hope I, I hope I live to be yeah. 340 years old, you know, but like, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for every day I'm, I'm yeah. given, that I'm here. We talked I'm, about that a lot this past weekend too, just yeah. at WrestleCade and just seeing all the people around and a hundred percent, man, take the picture. That's the biggest piece of advice. Take the picture guys. Always, mm -hmm. always yeah. take the picture. It was so great by the way hanging with Maxel and Evie. That was my first time getting to hang with Maxel yeah. and uh, seeing him earn all that c cash for the $5 <laughs> to be deleted by King Maxel. That yeah, was, he was very proud of that. That was, that was some good stuff. Some good stuff for sure. And of course, the Gothic baby stealing the hearts of everyone who was in attendance at WrestleCade. How could she not? So thank you, Matt Hardy, for giving me a shot here and, and helping us put on a great show week in and week out 100 down and many, many more to go. Thank you, John, for manifesting this podcast. Man, if it, this was manifestation, yeah. no questions asked. The no. words have been spoken here on the extreme life of Matt Hardy. We will see you next time. Delete. <laughs>